So I was going through my closet the other day just trying to organize some stuff and I came across this guy right here and it's the Galaxy S7 Edge and I remember it was one of my favorite phones to use back in the day so I figured let's try it out let's see how it does in 2021. So I charged it up and I've been using it for a couple days now and I figured hey let's review it. So can the S7 Edge, a five-year-old phone, still be viable in 2021? Well let's check it out. Yo, what is up guys, Aaron here. And this is the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. So just a brief history, when my Note 4 died, I upgraded to the S7 Edge and I remember being super excited because back then, Samsung claimed to have the best display, a beefier CPU, improved edge screen, improved camera, and all the typical stuff you'd expect every year. And the reason I think Samsung stood out compared to all their other flagships back then, in my opinion, is because they decided to try something different and release a phone with a curved display and improve on it each and every year. And it's their commitment towards the curved display that brought them so much success to this day. So this phone was released back in March of 2016, about five years ago. And the edge screen wasn't anything new. We've already seen it before with the S6. But the S7 Edge had a bigger and better screen, a 5.1 inch AMOLED display with QHD resolution, thinner bezels with deeper curves, and just looking at it now, it still looks really sharp. And it's crazy to think that Samsung was able to achieve this about five years ago. No, it ain't like my Note 10 Plus, but a phone from 2016, this ain't bad. This is my work phone, an iPhone 8, and this came out a year after the S7 Edge. And if you look at the screen and the bezels, it's kind of laughable, but it's a different story for another day. But it just shows you that Samsung was way ahead of its time. However, the phone does still look dated, of course, with all these new phones with gigantic screens. But just at a glance, it still looks and feels premium. But I do have to note that after using this phone for a couple days now, the screen just feels super fragile and sensitive. And although Samsung did have the best displays at that time, I think it came at a cost. The material just feels fragile and easy to break when dropped. Samsung also did have issues with screen burns, which is the discoloration of the screen panel wherever the burn took place. And you can see an example of that here when I turn on the camera. Overall, still a great display in 2021, just with some minor drawbacks. And as for the performance, the S7 Edge is rocking a Snapdragon 820, a quad-core CPU, an Adreno 530 GPU, 4 gigs of RAM, and also 32 gigs of storage with a micro SD card. Unfortunately, the phone is still stuck on Android 8, but it's still receiving updates to this day. And honestly, using this phone alongside with my Note 10 Plus, it just feels noticeably slow. Well, obviously. But I don't remember the phone feeling this slow at all. And I'm not sure if it's because I've been spoiled with the Note 10 Plus, or maybe just the phone slowing down after all these updates, or maybe just a bit of both. But it definitely feels laggy in certain situations. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still snappy and responsive, but you can start to feel the phone slow down when you have all these apps running in the background. I also notice when you try to open and close apps, it takes a second for it to fully load. And the load times is also noticeably slower, especially when comparing it to a recent flagship. And as for the camera, it's actually pretty good for a five-year-old phone. The rear is a 12 megapixel camera capable of shooting in 4K at 30 frames. And to my surprise, it ran pretty smooth. The photo quality was also not that bad. Colors aren't as vivid compared to my Note 10 Plus, but the image quality was still there. And the video quality also caught me by surprise. I thought recording in 4K at 30 frames would severely slow down my phone, but it worked well without any lags or jitters. However, when you do upload the video to a PC, that's when you start to see the quality lack a bit. The front camera is a 5 megapixel camera, and although it's a bit weak on paper, I felt the image quality was not that bad, especially comparing it to a newer iPhone 8. So here's a couple photos that I took with the S7 Edge, just in case you guys are curious. Overall, camera's not bad for a 5-year-old phone, but don't expect much out of it. The phone's also rocking a 3600 milliamp battery, which is a fair size, and battery life was also pretty good when you're not doing anything. Under heavy workload, don't expect this thing to last you all day. It probably won't even last you half a day, but of course your mileage may vary from mine. The phone has fast charging capabilities with the micro USB, as well as wireless charging, which I thought was a pretty neat feature to have back in 2016. The speakers on this phone is just okay, and initially I thought the quality was pretty good, 
but after comparing it to my Note 10 Plus, yeah, it's lacking. But that's expected from a 5 year old phone. It's not terrible, still works, pretty good for a 5 year old phone. The phone also has a fingerprint sensor on the home button and I'm not gonna lie, it's quick and it's good. I didn't have any misreads and it just stayed consistent. Kinda made me miss having a home button. I remember when home buttons were going extinct, I was pretty upset about it, but that's just the day we live in now. And another good feature on this phone is that it has a headphone jack, which is a dying breed at this point, but still nice to have. So for the price of the phone, you can find this anywhere online between $80 to $100, maybe even cheaper. But is it worth that much in 2021? And as much as I love Samsung, my answer has to be no. I just remember feeling super frustrated when apps wouldn't close properly, loading times were slow, apps wouldn't open properly. It just, it was kind of a pain to use. But if you're only going to be doing the basic calling, texting, and very little social media, I think it's very viable in 2021. However, in this price range, I don't think I can recommend this phone because you can get a Google Pixel 2, which I used after this phone, for nearly the same price. And I also don't think these updates really help the phone either. It actually hurts it more than anything. The phone still has great features and specs, but the software and durability is the main reason why I wouldn't recommend this phone in 2021. So if you're looking for a $100 phone, I'd probably go with the Google Pixel 2 or just cough up a couple more dollars and get the S9 because I don't think I can recommend this phone. Anyways, that was my quick review of the S7 Edge. And if you guys do currently own this phone, let me know what you guys think. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. So if you guys enjoyed this content, don't forget to sub, drop a like, leave a comment. It'll really help out this channel. Anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.